there's a language for understanding how a beam gets depleted as it propagates through a tissue. In this short tutorial, I'm going to talk about how the radiance L changes as it propagates a short distance dx through a tissue. It loses a certain amount of its power per unit area due to both absorption and scattering, as you see here in the title. So what we're going to consider, basically, is a beam heading into some region of tissue. It's already in there and it's propagating along. And then there's a small thickness of tissue. I'll mark that with just some dashed lines. There's no actual boundary there. And this thickness here would be what we call dx. And over that distance, a certain amount of scattering and absorption occurs. And so the beam comes in like this and coming out of that region, there's going to be scattering generated in that region. We don't know what its distribution is. There's also going to be some absorption, which reduces the amount of photons present overall. And there's going to be some unscattered light from the incident beam, which continues to move along and is still present after passing through region dx. So let's be a little more quantitative about this. So quantitatively, we would say we're going to consider a radiance L. And that radiance is something that has a direction associated with it. We call that direction capital omega. In the book, there's a hat over that omega, by the way. And what we're going to be comparing is the radiance coming into a region of thickness dx. And I'll write a little a vector here with a certain length on it and assign that length L. And it's heading in this horizontal direction, which is the direction we care about in this problem. It's sort of like a beam. And then what comes out, there's going to be a certain amount of that beam that survives this interaction. Up here we said it was the beam out. Here I'll write it as an amount here, and it's the initial radiance L minus a change, dL. And then there's a certain amount of the rest of the radiance, that's the amount dL there, and that's due to depletion of the beam. Depletion of this incident unidirectional beam, which would be, if you want to think of it as a radiance versus direction, you would say it's a delta function in the horizontal direction. But what we care about is dL is composed of two parts. In both cases, it's proportional to the radiance that there is. So there's a certain beam strength, if you will, L. And then there's a certain probability over this distance dx that there's going to be absorption. We write that probability as a quantity mu a times the distance dx. This is the amount of radiance that gets dis subtracted out of the initial radiance due to absorption. So I'm going to label that. And there's an exactly analogous term that uh, accounts for the scattering. So there's, again, the more radiance there is, then the same fraction of that radiance represents a larger amount of loss. In this case, the loss is due to scattering. So there's, uh, there's a mu s instead of a mu a, same dx, and this is the amount of scattering related loss that subtracts from the incident beam. Now let me name these two quantities, this mu a and this, this mu s. So mu a is what we call the probability of absorption that occurs per unit length. You see that mu a times a length gives me a probability then the probability multiplies by the amount of radiance to tell me the change in radiance. So the change in radiance and radiance have the same dimensions. Therefore, mu a dx is dimensionless. Therefore, mu a has dimensions of one over length. And it's exactly the same thing for the scattering. This is called the scattering coefficient, and it's the probability of scattering per unit length. And let me emphasize that the scattering is happening over all possible directions. So if I talk about my little point at which scattering is occurring within that little dx distance, there might not be isotropic scattering. There might be a certain amount of fairly forward-directed scattering, and then maybe a little bit weaker scattering in other directions. We can draw a little dashed diagram around that to make a sort of polar plot where the size of the distance from the origin in that direction is the strength of the scattering. Let's finish up by looking at what the implications are of this relationship where the change in a quantity is proportional to the quantity itself.
you'll probably recognize this as leading to an exponential. So you'll notice if we group it together and write dl over l, if we group the terms here, we get the expression mu a plus mu s times dx. I'm going to make a correction to the way I've been writing this. You'll notice the way I've drawn it here, dl is a positive quantity in this expression over here. Really, the change in L over distance is negative. So for this equation here, I'm going to put a minus sign over here so that we get an exponential decay. So if I integrate this expression, as you know, the left-hand side gives me the logarithm of L, and the right-hand side gives me just integral over dx, so the dx becomes an x. So this becomes negative mu a plus mu x x plus a constant. If I exponentiate both of these things, I get that the radiance after passing through this distance dx has exponentially decayed according to these the, of some of the absorption and scattering coefficients. And now this is times some constant. I'll call that constant k. If I satisfy the initial conditions, which is that if I don't propagate any distance at all, if then I would expect that the radiance in will equal the radiance coming out because it hasn't propagated over any distance x. So that suggests that I can write this coefficient in such a way as to say the radiance after some distance x is equal to the radiance before that distance x times the attenuation over that distance x. So this then gives us a basic rule for how the radiance decays over distance due to absorption loss and scattering loss. This is the beginning language that we need in order to start talking about how light propagates in tissue.